good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rivulus Irrigation Training Series. I'm your host, Richard Restucia, and today we're in the middle of Smart Irrigation Month. It's July 19th. It's one of the hottest summers on record all over the world. And uh, if you're like me and Mike Palumbo, my guest today, uh, you're fighting to keep your landscapes uh, not just looking good, but in many cases just alive. And uh, that presents a challenge for a lot of people right now. Uh, fortunately, we've got uh, Mike here today uh, helping us understand how you can use Jane Unity and your smart controllers to better manage uh, through the uh, stress of, uh, that your plants are experiencing with a smart controller. Now, for those of you who don't know Mike, uh, let me tell you, Mike's been in this industry. He grew up in this industry. His father, Dave Palumbo, actually trained me when I first got in the industry. Uh, so Mike has a wealth of knowledge. Um, he's been uh, working uh, in technology uh, for almost his entire career in uh, in irrigation, and um, you know that you don't find very many people that have uh, ten plus years experience in irrigation technology in the landscape area. So uh, the other thing that uh, I find about Mike uh, that he does so well, uh, well, really two more things. One, he's got a, a great knowledge of. Uh, the technology and software, but more importantly, he can impart that knowledge to people, which you're going to experience in just a few minutes in a very simple to understand manner. Uh, it's a really unique uh, talent that he possesses. And then uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, Mike uh, really is great at uh, keeping his customers happy, right? Whenever you're dealing with technology and weather and droughts, and, uh, and heat, um, customers, you know, have, uh, have issues. Uh, he's really great and making sure his customers are taken care of. So Mike, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time in the middle of your busy summer of water management to, uh, to talk to us. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Look forward to uh, hopefully sharing some knowledge here uh, for our current users and how to better, uh, some best practices for them. So uh, looking forward to, forward to it. Yeah, so Mike, this is your first summer in the Phoenix, Arizona area, you know, the greater Phoenix area. Uh, prior to this, you've been in California. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking uh, this is probably the highest heat you've seen for any long period of time. Uh, how does this affect the landscapes that you're seeing? I mean, uh, how fast do people have to react before they have a problem? Yeah, it's it's uh, days. It's one day, two days, uh, especially out here. It's even maybe shorter than that. Uh, you know, we're going on about maybe 20 days straight of 110 degree weather in Arizona. So uh, time is of the essence when it comes to irrigation management and, you know, being able to check stuff and uh, stay on top of things. So uh, it's a little bit different in Southern California. You have a little bit more leeway, but uh, we still uh, went through a heat wave there the last couple of weeks. So it's, uh, it's pretty important to uh, stay on top of our, our issues out there. Yeah, certainly it is. It's happening all over uh, the U.S. right now. And uh, uh, so we really appreciate some ideas of how to stay on top of uh, our landscape, make sure we don't uh, have any uh, uh, damage. So, uh, yeah. um, gosh, I, I'm looking at this first photo. Uh, uh, the turf and uh, and uh, shrub are certainly taking a beating there. Uh, and this is a typical, it's not a typical necessarily landscape, but you do see these types of landscapes in Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of the common areas have the turf and uh, shrubs. So, yeah, we see quite a bit uh, of this air, uh, around the area. So you drive by anywhere. If, uh, a lot of these guys aren't using smart controllers. You'll see a lot of uh, the turf looking like that. So it's uh, very important to be able to adjust with ET and, you know, with the heat comes and uh, be able to increase our run times. Yeah. So, well, we're all excited to see what you have for us today, Mike. Yeah, yeah, look forward. We'll get started here. Uh, just a little photo on the left-hand side, that's a true ET values of my home here, uh, 0.37 of inches of ET today, uh, next couple of days. So it's pretty extreme out here So in Arizona. So uh, when you're trying to refill the plant material and kind of put that back, it's a big, big number there, big number to crack. So, but uh, yeah, we'll kind of so, get started. So just, Mike, for, for yeah, those yeah. of us that don't know, can we go back to that chart? Because I'm, yeah. I'm looking at these 0.37s, 0.36s. That's uh, inches of ET, correct? Of daily ET? Yes. Yep. And so we're really, I mean, I'm not that good at math, but uh, ballpark in my head, we're, we're close to three inches of water needed uh, this week for a landscape in uh, in Phoenix. 
Yeah, it's pretty darn close. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of water somebody has to put on. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of water, a lot of run times, a lot, a lot, a little bit bigger water window. So if they're not prepared, they uh, definitely uh, you need to get with it. Yeah. Just a, a kind of uh, for proactive water management, just some basic ideas, guys. Uh, you know, uh, we want to make sure our stations are on full auto. Uh, as you know, we have a couple of different uh, options for schedule adjustments, you know, user defined, fixed and full auto. Uh, we really recommend uh, doing the full auto. That way you get the benefit of your ET data that we provide. Uh, so if you guys do get a chance, check your schedules. I know fix is easy to use and that you're used to it, but you know it really, really benefits the landscape, benefits everybody being able to use a full auto mode, especially with the Gen Unity system. Uh, second item, guys, to check is, uh, for, for, for us is, uh, trust the scientific weather data that Unity provides. Uh, there's a misconception that uh, the subscription costs uh, for the e or for the uh, cell phone carriers that we're paying them the twenty dollars a month or the two thirty nine a year. Uh, that subscription cost cut as it covers the scientific weather data that we provide, and uh, we do a pretty good. Uh, an Arizona study uh, said that if you track hourly ET. That is the most accurate possible ET values that you can provide when it comes to the certain areas. And with JUnity, that's exactly what we do. We uh, track hourly ET, uh, put that with our schedules. And when you have current uh, or accurate ET and accurate plant profile, uh, that gives us the ultimate irrigation for plant health. And a lot of uh, smart controllers are, you know, we're, we're saying water savings, but a lot of the times we want to have plant health. And I think that's a big uh, thing that uh, we got to start talking about a bit more is what's our alt optimal water for plant health and not so much exactly water savings should be a byproduct of that, but uh, keeping our plants healthy, it should be our number one priority. Mike, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. And I have uh, <clears throat> two additional comments to add to that. And the first one is um, uh, the ET data every hour. It's quite amazing because I know that um, uh, Jane Unity uses 17 factors of the weather, right? It's not that we're just taking a temperature reading every hour. It's 17 factors of the we uh, weather, including humidity, sun intensity, temperatures, wind direction. Um, uh, so that's amazing that they can do all those calculations on an hourly basis times all the customers. So, uh, so, so, so that is something I believe only Jane Unity does. And then um, what you also said about the, the plant health, uh, I had so many people, so many branch managers when I was at Valley Crest many years ago that would say, gee, we're going to save water, but our landscapes are going to look terrible. We're going to get mm -hmm. fired. And then uh, quickly they saw that if you were applying the right amount of water, uh, you had really healthy plants. Uh, this is how the uh, the bigger of the plants, uh, this is how they look best. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you mentioning those two things. Yeah, yeah, you train, you train those roots uh, to the certain depth that you need it to, they'll uh, be able to take a little bit less water down the road. So definitely crucial to put the right amount down. Yeah. And I just want to remind everybody too that we have the Q&A in the chat open. So if you've got some questions for Mike, uh, please uh, put them in there and we'll, uh, we'll address them when appropriate. So those are the first two. Uh, three and four, guys, is make sure that your water window is open enough for the demand. Uh, we get this quite a bit where uh, they're seeing some stations not watering uh, what they need to be watering on the days of the week. Uh, come to find out it's their water window so short. So make sure you have enough water window uh, for your demand. And then we all, I also recommend switching from a, uh, uh, a full block days. We have the block days, switching to a daily water window and using that as your block day if you need to remove any, uh, you know, keep something dry for a mo day. So uh, switch to daily water window and then also open it up and make sure you have enough uh, water window for the demand of, of the uh, of your site for your site. So Mike, we've got our first question coming in about that. And uh, this person's asking, um, so is this something I do just in the summer or should I do this, you know, year round? Uh, I would do it year round. Uh, obviously, you, you know, summertime is going to be the most demand for water. Uh, we're going to be watering more often in longer run times. But uh, I would uh, change water windows, you know, even during the winter time. Uh, this kind of gives you some more flexibility than having just one water window, you know, for all every day of the week. If you have different events or you have different stuff going on at certain times, 
you can adjust these water windows uh, so that uh, you can work around any type of events you have, you know, for your client, for your HOA. So, uh, you know, it, it, it just gives you more flexibility out, out in the field. Yeah. So, so if I understand you correctly, it means uh, you'll always have water uh, instead of a block day where you would have no water. And if it happened to go below a trigger level, it'd have to catch up. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Number four, guys, and this is the, the our main focus for today is going to be uh, dynamic programming, uh, change stations from standard to dyna dynamic programming. Uh, this will practically be irrigate before trigger level and refill the water bucket. And this is going to take into account any uh, upcoming block days and forecasted weather. So uh, this is kind of our, our main focus today is getting people to understand this uh, way of how Jane Unity programs a controller compared to the old way of ET water manager. So we'll kind of go in some samples next and kind of see these and kind of what the old way was and then what this new way dynamic programming is moving forward. So uh, we'll, we'll go through some samples after this. Great. So Mike, we have another question coming in and that is, are you going to show us how to how to change from standard to dynamic? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we'll go through these. I think in two or three more slides, I'll show you exactly where to go and to make these changes. And then, but uh, it, it would be good. These next few slides will give you a good understanding of the way we did things in the past, the way it is now, and the way that we can change the flexibility that we have. So as we mentioned before, guys, standard programming, which was on the ET Water Manager program, uh, and then we did uh, move it over to Gene Unity. So if you see your stations and it doesn't say dynamic on there, you'll be running standard programming. Uh, that's going to be all run times for the week. We'll have the same irrigation run times, uh, same as before. Uh, we'll irrigate once moisture balance falls below the trigger level. So it's got to go below the trigger level before it's going to irrigate again. Uh, and it's going to replenish the difference from the water bucket to trigger level. So I got a little uh, thing there. We'll go through the slide there. So keep that in mind. The difference between the water bucket and trigger level uh, will only irrigate any one irrigation event that amounts. Yeah, so that seems about perfect how it should run, right? Yeah, yeah. As far as for the most part, you know, uh, it, it does. It's good. It does. Uh, the old programming was good. Uh, I always heard out here in Arizona, uh, it's not good. doesn't keep up with the heat. doesn't keep up with the heat. So I think the dynamic programming will help kind of, you know, put that to bed and be able to, to you know, to keep up out here a little bit more. Yeah. But, okay, uh, great. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. Standard programming, guys. You'll look at your programming here. Uh, you don't see dynamic here, so you'll notice this is going to be standard programming. You'll notice every, all the days, all the run times are going to be the same throughout the whole week. Uh, this won't change for this week. Uh, next week, you might see something different, but all these run times would be the same here. So two things to check here would be your, your program, and the days of the week will tell you what type of program you're running, uh, if it's standard, dynamic, or not. So uh, a screenshot of uh, an example there. Here's an example, guys, of kind of hitting the trigger level. So our current uh, our current water window was 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So you'll see here at the 7 a.m. we haven't hit the trigger level yet. Uh, so we're going to go here, and then we're going to irrigate right about 9 o'clock uh, once it's time. And if you notice the where it says water bucket 0.85, trigger level 0.637. So keep that in mind. That's a 0 0.20, roughly 0 0.20 for basic math. And if you can remember on the main screen, the ET loss for today was 0.37 alone. So we're only able to put down on the standard uh, irrigation, we're only able to put down that difference between the water bucket and trigger level uh, at any one irrigation events. That's why this blue bar here, guys, is not going all the way to the top. It's just going here. It's just going to that amount because that's the, that's the difference between here and the irrigation. Interesting. And so the reason, uh, Mike, if I'm understanding this correctly, that that, that it didn't water at 12 o'clock or uh, one o'clock or two o'clock or three o'clock is because that was out of the water window. That's correct. Yes. It has to be within that water window for there. So that's why it will fall below and keep on going until it's next available opportunity within the water window. Yeah. Okay. So then we're, and, and we're hitting it with 115 degree heat till eight o'clock at night. So yeah, it's going to really deplete. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, deplete. Uh, you'll see a couple of slides here too. You'll really see depletions if you don't stay on top of it, especially with block days as well. Right. So, okay. So we're looking at hourly data of one day, not uh, a week's worth. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yep. This is hourly data. This is Friday here. 
uh, for this. So for this example, Friday, uh, we have two block days, Saturday and Sunday for this particular station. So you'll see where we are on Friday here. Uh, this is uh, 11 p.m. Then Saturday, Sunday is blocked. So you'll see we're going to get down to here. Our trigger lower, our, our moisture bonds on by the time Monday rolls around, our next available time to water will be uh, here. And even being able to put that amount back to 0 0.20, we're still not putting enough back to keep our, uh, you know, our turf looking the way it should be. So uh, standard is good, but when you get in the heat here and you have some bigger higher ET values, it's really hard to keep up here. So it's, uh, you'll see here, it's going to go through the rest of the week here and then irrigate again uh, later on that night within the next water window. So Mike, I got to ask this. I always thought ET was a measurement looking backwards. How do you know what the ET is going to be on Friday and Monday of next week? Yeah, that's the Jane Unity forecast of weather, predictive analytics, we call it. So uh, that's what's new within our system. Not only do you, you know, there, there's other manufacturers, I think, that can look at forecasts of weather, but none of them can uh, incorporate that within the irrigation schedules. That's the difference between us and, and everybody else is that uh, we look at forecasts of weather, but we also incorporate it within our irrigation schedules if you have the right programming set up in the system. Yeah, that's amazing because if you look at these charts, you can see it would really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, being able to go forward and look ahead is a huge difference. So now guys, uh, so that's standard programming. Now dynamic programming is it done in two ways. Uh, irrigation run times will vary, vary from day to day. That's different from uh, standard irrigate, uh, ET water. And then uh, this will still irrigate once it falls below the trigger level. Uh, keep that in mind as well. However, this will replenish the entire root zone based on the plant profile. So this will fill up your root zone. Uh, it's not uh, limited to, to your moisture, or to your water bucket, to your trigger level. This will fill up the whole root zone uh, over time. So Mike, we've got another question coming in and uh, somebody is asking, are these charts generated from an on-site weather station? No, we don't have any on-site weather stations. We used a cluster of weather stations uh, throughout the uh, whatever area you're in. Uh, each controller is going to have its own uh, kind of virtual weather station with the, uh, your longitude latitude. And we are using uh, similar uh, uh, weather data to, uh, you know, uh, NASA, the news stations uh, with Doppler radar, satellite imaging, satellite imaging. So we're able to take all that configuration with the 17 points of data that we, uh, that we calculate. And being that we're a cloud-based system, we're able to kind of program that. So it should get you within about a half a mile of your controller uh, as far as the accurate uh, weather data there. Yeah, it's really interesting today too, Mike. I'm always amazed at how um, you can read these weather reports and it says it's gonna rain at two this afternoon. It's gonna rain for 20 minutes and it's gonna be accurate. Uh, satellite imaging and Doppler radar combined uh, have made this forecasting and tracking of weather uh, better than I've ever seen it. Uh, it yeah. turned, uh, the technology is just uh, amazing. And when I compare that to uh, maybe a 30 or $40 weather station that I have in my yard, I, and there's no way I can keep up yeah. with uh, the accuracy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's real time ET data. And, uh, you know, we've, if somebody's done a test before, and it's pretty accurate to, to the, what they had a weather station in their backyard. So uh, we're very confident with our weather data that it's very accurate. So dynamic programming, guys, you'll see here on the program, you're going to see dynamic and it's going to say maximum irrigation 100%. So that's the first standard of dynamic programming. You're going to have your different days that we are different water times. So you'll know that is dynamic as well. Uh, so that's kind of a, a tale of that. Again, we have block days, Saturday and Sunday. And you'll see here, uh, 7 a.m. is our end of our water window. We haven't hit the trigger level yet. Uh, so we'll irrigate again once we get to 9 p.m. But you'll see on this uh, particular uh, dynamic program, it's going to put more water down uh, to refill the full root zone. It's not going to be limited like it was in standard programming. So uh, when we call dynamic programming, this is going to allow you to be able to put down uh, more water uh, on any one irrigation event, try to keep up with the heat, kind of refill that root zone uh, for the next day. Yeah, and so, and this is what's going to make a difference in your plant health. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when you go in deficit, it's it's rough to kind of get caught up, you know. So if you go in deficit too long and you just sit there in deficit, you know, you're going to be stressing out quite a bit. But uh, even though we're going below the trigger level here, 
it's only for a couple hours and then we're going to fill up that root zone with the amount of water that's required so it's going to help us kind of replenish that similar to our bodies in the heat you know if you go in deficit without uh, drinking water uh, you're going to feel sluggish not as uh, you know not as active same thing with plants if uh, you have to be able to fill that up and get you know be running on full and not so much on empty when it comes to water yeah ah, that's a great analogy yeah thank you yeah so this is dynamic programming guys but i put proactive there uh so proactive irrigation run times will still vary from day to day just like the other dynamic uh however this will irrigate prior to moisture balance falling below the trigger level and when we come to block days this is going to be very important uh, for us uh, to be proactive approach uh it is it will still replenish the root entire root zone based on plant profile as well so it's going to fill it up just like the other dynamic programming so the big difference is going to be the middle one here excuse me it's going to irrigate uh before the trigger level so you'll see here guys dynamic program irrigation is going to be one minute the minimal and then the 100 that's going to get us to our dynamic that we're going to be proactive amounts you'll see the different run times here uh, this is just based off uh, what the root zone is and how far it's depleted so all that could change on a daily basis block day saturday and sunday again you'll see kind of how this works on this new one so you'll see at 5 a.m we got an irrigation event here guys going to fill it up uh you'll see that this is friday the, the 21st on the 21st it knows our system automatically knows on saturday and sunday we have two block days uh, coming up. Even though we haven't hit the trigger level yet, our system's gonna say, hey, we need to irrigate now uh, so we don't go in a deficit over the weekend. Uh, and this is crucial here. So uh, just keep in mind here, this blue bar kind of filling up all the way to the, the uh, water bucket here. It's gonna get us through the weekend pretty darn good. Otherwise guys, we'll probably be down way down here by the time Monday rolls around, this will be here and our stuff will be stressed out. So. Uh, We'll irrigate here, our normal one, and then we're going to be looking forward ahead for block days. Knowing that's coming, we're going to irrigate there. And then this is what it's going to look like on Monday. We barely get below that trigger level on Monday. Otherwise, we would have been probably about down here, stressed out plants over the weekend, two block days. Uh, two block days may be extreme, but we do have customers who don't want any water over the weekend. So uh, it is it is a something that uh, we really see out here quite a bit. but. Uh, now we have a way to kind of combat that and be proactive with, with that approach. So then we fill it up barely below the trigger level, and then we'll fill it up uh, for the you know at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. depending on your plant profile. So dynamic schedule and being proactive is a good way in the summertime, especially when you have block days uh, that you're going to be able to put uh, irrigation down uh, without going in deficit over the weekend. Yeah, what a smart way to do it, Mike. Now, we do have a question coming in, and uh, this person's asking what happens when a water window isn't sufficient for full bucket refill and dynamics. Yeah, that's where we go again, is we want to uh, increase that water window if possible. If you're able to do that, uh, speak with the board, speak with the property manager, let them know kind of what we're running up against. Uh, hopefully they can take into consideration, but at least you're giving them a heads up kind of what's happening out in the field with the weather. Uh, then they can deal with the homeowners if it's, you know, you know, if the turf's kind of drying up a little bit as well. Uh, and then other than that, uh, our stations will uh, or will take priority. Uh, turf will take priority on stations on depletion levels and irrigate the most important stations first. And that uh, is going to be our turf. And then it's going to uh, go on to plants and shrubs after that. Yeah. Okay. So it is. So I think what you're saying is it catch it will catch up. Yeah, yeah. Over over time, yeah, we'll catch up in it, but it's gonna it's gonna do the whatever's uh, needed the most depletion and then priorities too. Whatever's the most important, which is gonna be turf first, it's gonna irrigate those and make sure those, and then uh, hopefully you're able to uh, extend that water window, and then maybe we do shrubs in uh, on any time watering shrubs and plants, and be able to keep your turf in there. But it will catch up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. So where to make the changes, guys? So. Uh, you can do it in grouping, uh, but you also can do it on per station level here. So if you click on the station that you want to change, and uh, I kind of recommend doing one or two at a time here, just until you kind of get used to it, see how it reacts for you guys. Uh, so when you go to your station, you're going to hit schedule adjustments. Schedule adjustments will take you to this screen, and then you're going to hit all set my maximum si uh, cycle time and minimum soak time. 
once you get in there, this was the first dynamic one. So you're going to put 100%. That's going to get you that first dynamic way where uh, you won't irrigate until you go under the trigger level, but it's going to refill your whole root zone. If you want to add where you're going to be proactive, then you put the one for your minimum irrigation minutes. And this will be the one where you'll be able to uh, refill the root zone prior to hitting the trigger level. And that's all you need to do. This, these, two but, or these two sections here, and then uh, everything would be in dynamic mode. Then you'll be able to just look on your screen here. It's going to show dynamic. Then you know you uh, have, every, have your station dynamic mode. So guys, when that's done and you're in dynamic mode and you're running uh, your uh, schedules, uh, this is a new year-over-year -year analysis we have. This is a great tool to look at um, as a water manager. Uh, meet with your property manager. Meet with your team, your landscape team, and review this. You'll see this here, guys. It's going to go uh, March, for example, this March 2023. And this is uh, March 2022. So you can see uh, it was hotter. Uh, we lost a lot of more ET on uh, March 2022 than 2023. Uh, so you'll be able to kind of here see uh, if we had some rain events. Uh, this is a good, a good tool. I want to say when it first started, had an HOA uh, came to us and said, hey, we're watering more this year than we did last year. Uh, <laughs> we want your current, your controllers aren't doing the job. Uh, if I would have had this, it would have been a lot easier to show them no. Uh, it's hotter this year than it was last year. Therefore, we're irrigating more. We had to do it manually on a spreadsheet to show them but this is a good tool if you're a landscape contractor, if you're you know, a property owner, to be able to go and look at this and see, hey, uh, what was the weather like compared to last year? How much ET lost? Do we have any rain or, or not? And be able to kind of get a better understanding of uh, maybe why your water bills went up or why your water bills went down compared to last year. So it's a good graph uh, to review. And then down below, you'll see, guys, uh, you're going to have your blue uh, bars. Those are going to be your uh, irrigation usage uh, average per station. So uh, obviously the goal is to kind of have a mimic what's going on up top. Uh, as we have hotter weather, our, our irrigation is going to increase as we have cooler weather, it's going to uh, reduce. So we wanted those bars to kind of be, uh, mimicking, mimic each other, uh, over time. So Mike, I love this chart. Thank you for sharing it. Um, kind of pops my bubble. I thought in March of this year, I was a genius water manager, but <laughs> come to find out, uh, ET was just a lot lower. Um, so I, I think that's important to note that this isn't static, right? It changes based on the weather. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's key. Um, it's a great tool for water managers to use, like you said, to show your customers, well, yeah, it's hotter this year. ET is much higher uh, this year as a result of what it, whatever uh, the answer is. And then, um, and then thirdly, uh, why I like this is that uh, if you did have a situation where ET was lower and you're using more water, that's uh, that's a real uh, red flag. You've got uh, some, some other issue going on, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely would have some other issue going on. And that's where the next slide is pretty good to start looking at uh, kind of a deeper dive into those issues with our over underwater report. Uh, this report, guys, is kind of based off, you can do uh, multiple ways, your controller, your site, you can break it down per station here where you're going to have an over, uh, over underwater report. So you'll see on the uh, screen here where it says uh, ETO and average for this date here, 0 0.07. Here's how much irrigation. Uh, this could fluctuate a little bit, you know, certain days of the watering times, but this is a good thing too. You want to see uh, these bars kind of mimic each other. And then, like you said, Richard, if you have one that watered a lot on a certain day, you can really take a deep dive in to see what's going on with those particular stations. You know, yeah. it could be as easy as, you know, establishment schedules left on instead of taking off. They left it on without knowing it for over a month or so. Uh, you know, we see that quite a bit where uh, they don't put an end date in there and they leave it on. And then we have some higher water bills or higher water usage than what the ETO is. So, yeah, it's, it's a good report to kind of keep uh, be able to do a deep dive on stuff as well. And and you're showing it on a daily basis here, but I can do it weekly, monthly. I compare uh, six months at a time. So yeah. yeah, what a great tool. And again, um, I start to see a lot of uh, 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 overwatering. I can look per station too and uh, help identify maybe some installation or design issues that I'm, that I'm having. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Just want to kind of hopefully you learn a little something as far as uh, dynamic programming. Uh, highly recommend it. If uh, standard programming is great, guys, 
uh, I would recommend uh, uh, the trigger level lowering that if you want to stay with that. But uh, if you can get to dynamic programming, it's much better uh, approach to water management out here, especially in the desert, the hot areas, even in SoCal. You know, uh, it's a better approach to uh, irrigation and managing our water uh, and our landscape for uh, optimal optimal plant health. Yeah, yeah, Mike, great job today. This uh, I, I certainly learned a lot, and uh, and that's great when that happens. Um, I all, we did have one last question coming in, and uh, the question is: Can we assign priority stations for watering? Um, uh, our system does it automatically. I can uh, we can share with you if you want to send us an email. We can share what our system automatically does that, that automatically based off of, I believe it's turf and then plants and shrub, uh, shrubs. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Again, Mike, thank you. So Mike, here's your contact information on the screen. If I have a, if I'm watching, I have a question later, uh, I can email call, you're okay with that? Yeah, yeah, email call, and then uh, we can help you out, kind of get you guys set up, get your stations uh, going. Like I said, I really recommend maybe starting with one or two if you're unfamiliar with it at a time, see how that works uh, for your irrigation, see how, your turf looks and then switching everything over uh, over time. Yeah, so uh, well, I'm sorry, the questions keep on coming in. You've definitely engaged our audience, Mike. Uh, uh, someone else is asking uh, about the cost of the system and could I use it on a fruit farm also? Yeah, you can use it uh, on any type of system. Uh, the, the cost of the system is gonna be depending you know, on the station count uh, and through the, your distributor. Uh, we do have an ongoing subscription of, uh, right now it's 239 per year. But like I said, that includes the weather data that we provide, which is uh, pretty darn accurate. And it's uh, it's needed for out here without having correct weather data. Uh, it's kind of your guessing. And you can use historical ET, but, uh, you know, when you're losing uh, real live ET, it's, it's a huge difference. So that ongoing cost is, is well worth it as well. Yeah. And I, I chuckled when you said historical ET, because there's nothing like this year, right yeah. in the past that you can throw the historic uh, information out, out the window, I think, yep, especially absolutely. comparing it to something every hour. But yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah. And then the other thing I say is, you know, these systems pay for themselves in a couple of years, right? In the, in the, in the water savings and man for farming, you know, and what you're going to get yield increases too, I imagine uh, it's, it's going to be a, a dramatic change. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's an additional to water savings, electrical savings, labor savings, you know, not having to replace uh, plant material or turf as often, you know, uh, in overseeding and uh, fertilizing, you save a lot more than just uh, the water savings. So yeah, it's uh, it pays for itself, definitely. Yeah, it, um, it uh, just keeps going on and on and on, right? Yep, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well, listen, uh, Mike, again, thanks so much. Please email and call Mike if you've got additional questions. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined us today. We really appreciate it. Um, we know you're busy, especially this time of year. And so uh, the fact that you spent some of your uh, day with us is uh, is really great. Uh, remember, you can see all our trainings over 300 now at the Jane's USA uh, forward slash trainings page uh, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You know, we extract the audio out of these, put them into a podcast and uh, you can listen there. Uh, I love when I see the amount of podcast downloads we get every month to think that people are out there working and learning at the same time uh, really uh, is exciting to me. So again, Mike, thanks so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. And um, uh, we'll uh, look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye now. Bye-bye.